Hello, my friends. Boy, today, a tip for life that can change your perspective, whether you are out in the woods and trying to enjoy a camping experience or a bushcrafting experience, but you're running into a couple snags, like a lot of mosquitoes or nettles or something, or just our regular life, which we also know can be filled with those proverbial mosquitoes. So come along with me as we explore a way to walk through three different realms of life and see how different each of those realms can be. Just imagine that perspective is so vital in life that you live in a different world than other people based on your perspective. You've probably noticed this in your own life. You can be witnessing an event and you can have such a different take on it than another person that it can almost seem like you're living in different realms or different worlds. In a way, this is really true, and we can shift what realm we live in if we understand these three different realms that we can dwell in. This is all the path of mindfulness. The path of mindfulness walks us down through these three different realms, and each one you can think of as kind of a a layer to life. In that first realm, you're just going to see one aspect of life. In the second realm, more opens up to you. In the third realm, the world becomes really amazing. I'm going to give these three realms some kind of spiritual names based off of some Buddhist and Hindu traditions. And this is not to make them religious or anything like that, but just that often other traditions and other languages have concepts that we don't have in the English language that can be really useful. And though I'm not going to hold to these concepts in a really true way, I'm going to take them and mush them around a little bit to make them more workable for us, they are probably the best words in any language to encompass the nature of each of these three realms. The first realm is the realm of samsara. Now, this word, again, not directly translatable. Some people think of it as, as suffering or the wheel of cause and effect, where we look out and the world is basically a big external thing that is out for us. In the end, it's going to kill us. And in the meantime, it is going to make us miserable in a lot of different ways. Now, this mindset is where a lot of us can actually get pretty stuck. In this mindset, our, our mind feeds off of really dramatic emotions. So these are emotions such as that, that feeling of stress, feelings of anger, feelings of fear, outrage. When I'm in this place, Everything around me can look a little bit like an enemy. And we might think of this as the first level of existence, this first realm. This is not an overly fun place to be. There are good times in this realm. Because when the world around me lines up perfectly, and all of my personal efforts in this realm are just trying to line everything up perfectly, when things do line up perfectly for a moment, I'm really happy. But when I look around me at the world and the list of problems that I have, those moments tend to be pretty rare. And the bulk of my existence is in this feeling of, ah, oh, the world is working against me. It doesn't help that our culture glorifies this type of mindset through our very dramatic media, I'm not just talking about news media, but our movies, everything else, for them to work well, 
they take us on a ride, an emotional ride that mimics that mind state that we have in that first realm. So we want to be scared and we want to be happy and then relieved and then terrified and then uh, and go on this ride, this emotional roller coaster. These heavy feelings are very addictive and it's why a lot of us can get stuck in this first realm because these emotions, they just feel so strong that it's kind of like eating the SAD, the standard American diet. If I'm eating these fast food hamburgers all the time, I get so used to just fat, salt, boom, in my face taste that I'm no longer able to appreciate more subtle flavors of some perhaps healthier choices of food. The second realm is the realm of Maya. This is a Hindu concept that the world around us is kind of illusory or not as independent of our own perceptions and ideas and preconceptions as we might think. What we learn in this realm is that I can look at the world around me and I don't have to be pushed around by it in the same way. I can look at things and I can accept them as they are and realize that there's some things I'm just not going to be able to change and it's no use to fight against them. In this realm, I realize that all that energy of being so angry at things that I can't change is wasted energy. It's not doing anything except for causing me stress. It's definitely not changing the world or changing my life at all. Of course, there are things we can change, but there's also a lot of things we can't change. And so this is a realm of acceptance, of coming more into our rationality, learning to relax when there is pressure or pain or something else that otherwise would cause us to uh, fight back and tense. And it can feel like a very peaceful realm. In this realm, the same bad things that were just dragging me down in the realm of samsara, now they don't drag me down anymore. They just feel like things that are happening in the same way that I might look out around me and see, ah, here I am in the woods and there are positives and negatives about this experience like there are about all experiences. And then I can just soak in and say, this is where I am and be very accepting. The third realm also comes from a Hindu concept. In this one, I call Leela. And Leela is sometimes translated as ah, the divine play. And divine play brings us into a, a new realm. When we think of the world around us as a playground, then we get into a, a playful, adventuring, curious mindset. And the things that would have caused me agony or pain in the realm of samsara and would have caused me to find peace in the realm of maya now caused me to get curious, to explore and get playful. Really to explain these three realms best, I'm going to use the example of a rainy day. And we're going to see three different people, each of them dwelling in a different realm. The reality, notice, is the same. Person outside, rain pouring down onto them. The first person has put up their hood, is uh, tensing up, maybe put up an umbrella. They're fighting against this rain, which is soaking them and getting their clothes wet and causing them problems, and it sucks. The second person, the one who is dwelling in Maya, steps out into the rain, maybe takes off their shirt, and just feels the rain coming down onto them. They're totally accepting of the experience that's happening, and instead of fighting it, they accept it into themselves and experience it as it is. 
the third person goes out, finds the nearest mud puddle, jumps in, and starts playing in the mud puddle, reveling in the rain, laughing, and having an amazing time. Three different people, the same external experience, but three completely different realities that they're experiencing. Three different realms or worlds that they live in. Now, if you like the idea of dwelling in Maya or Lila instead of in samsara, then, wow, here is your chance to start to cultivate a mindset that leads you in that direction. And I'm going to give you a little pathway. Overall, the pathway is the pathway of mindfulness. Because as we start to understand what the activity of our mind is, we aren't just pulled along by it in autopilot. Instead, we're driving our own ship, <laughs> we're at the helm, and we can choose to look at the world differently. So that's what we're trying to do, is to be aware of our mind's activity, and then to make conscious choices. In other words, to respond to the world rather than react to it. And I'm going to give you a two-step path that will take you down the path, at least begin you on the path from samsara to maya to lila. The first part is meditation. And in the description, I'm going to link to some easy meditations. I'm going to say that I have explained on this channel and I think on my other channel. And these meditations, if you do not currently have a meditation practice, are great ways to start out and often avoid a lot of the frustration that people first experience when they start meditating. When you meditate, you're going to strengthen your ability to put your mind where you want it and to observe your mind's activity. And that second one especially is the key, to be able to observe our mind's activity. When we observe it, then we're aware of it and it is not driving us automatically. The second part of this is to begin to train your response mind. To do this, you've started to develop mindfulness. You notice when you start to resist something in the world. This can be a sensation. This can be the words that somebody spoke that start to create a resistance or a tension inside of you. It can be resistance or tension to your own emotional state. And that's often what it is. As soon as you notice that resistance, and as you meditate, you will become more and more able to notice that resistance. As soon as you notice that resistance, stop. Take a breath. And respond. Say, I see you mind reacting. I can see you now. Here is the reaction that you want to take. Notice that that reaction is almost always going to be, I'm going to use the word wrong. That reaction is almost always going to be one that leads you into that samsara realm. Instead, say, how can I respond? If you feel up to it, then you can choose to respond by accepting the experience. And if you really feel up to it, you can choose to respond by saying, how can I play with this experience? Either of those is fine, and be patient with yourself. Sometimes reaction, as it does, is just going to grab onto you, and it's going to own you. And that's okay. Notice it and say, next time I'm going to try again to respond instead of react. But Every time that you respond and you bring yourself into Maya or you bring yourself into Lila, you're retraining your brain out of reaction into response. You are starting to literally change the realm or the world that you experience around you. And as you put in, and it is months and years, sometimes of practice, because notice we have spent many years probably decades, training our mind into the samsara realm of being, into reaction. So 
Give yourself a little time to retrain. If you spend time doing this, you literally change your entire experience of life. Every moment shifts and changes. The taste of your food, the appreciation of the people around you, your experience of any sensation, color, the way that it feels when you make love, the way that you breathe. Everything changes when we do this. So there it is, my friends, a route from samsara to maya to lila. And it's a simple two-step route that gets us in that direction. This is not the end all, and it does take a lot of training, but that training, again, is really worth it. Now, all of us probably dwell in all three of those realms. It's not like we sit solidly in one unless we super, super put ourselves there. So for you, down in the comments, share which realm you feel like you're mostly in, but also your experiences of some of the other realms. So if you dwell mostly in Maya, Share a time when you went into Leela and you got really playful about something that you could have seen in a negative sense. And if you want, share a time when your mind got taken and grabbed into reaction mode and you found yourself in samsara. By sharing, by being human, relating to each other, we can all inspire each other down there in the comments. All right, love to you all, my friends, and I cannot wait to talk with you in the comments. <laughs>